All right, ladies and gentlemen, friendly reminder, tomorrow you do have vocab quiz 1 through 20, Wednesday 1 through 30, Thursday you have a test, focus, government structures, and vocab are due. Um, please make sure you're on top of your stuff. I have no kindness. We do the same thing every single week. It's been 20 weeks of doing the same thing. Like, figure it out. Um, that is due on Friday, uh, Thursday. Perfect. Okay, on your whiteboard. Give me the formal name of Mexico. It's not Mexico. Mexico. Like here in the United States, our, we call ourselves America, but our formal name is the United States of America. What is the formal name of Mexico on your whiteboard? By the way, if you look at your little diagram, I wrote it on there for you. What do we got? What do you got, Sean? The United Mexican States. Yes, the United Mexican States. So because it's called the United Mexican State, what type of government system is it? Right on your board, Bronson. That's what we're doing here. No. What type of system is it? Good. What is it? Bronson. Federal. It's a federalism. It's federalism. Who can raise your hand and tell me why it's a federalist state? Uh, federalist co uh, state, uh, Colin. Wait, what? Yeah, they have states. So when you have a central government and then you have state powers, it has to be a federalist government. Yeah. So the fact that you know it's called the United States of Mexico tells you it's a federalist state because it has states. <laughs> On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name. You can do abbreviations. What is the name of the party that had power since the 1930s until the year 2000? Good, Jade. PRI. PRI is going to support the creation of what inside Mexico today? Starts with a C. You've heard about it in movies, yeah. you've seen it <laughs> in the news, and, and they're incredibly violent. And what are they, Nina? The cartel. Who can raise their hand and tell me what the cartel is without any too, too much vicious details here? What is the cartel? When we say cartel, Jade, what do we mean? Like yeah, they're the drug dealers, they're the drug lords. Um, I don't care about the cartel. I don't watch movies about drug dealing. That's not my forte, if you will. Um, Pablo Escobar, yeah? He was the major drug pin of Mexico for a very long time. That's why you probably know his name. Um, there was another guy who just got arrested maybe it's six or eight years ago in Mexico. Then he got thrown into a Mexican um, maximum security jail, and then he dug a tunnel out. Do you remember that? <laughs> rode on a little train underneath and escaped. And then the US military went in to go find him in Mexico. We did a special raid and we got him. And then now he's sitting in a max. He's still alive. He's still alive. In a max jail inside the Nevada mountains. He doesn't see the sunlight. I can't remember what his name is. Yeah. You do know we have like max prison jails inside mountain. Right? These are where we put like terrorists and all that stuff. Like the uh, Boston bomber who blew up like the marathon. One of them died in the shootout. You've all seen the Mark Wahlberg movie. It's a great movie if you haven't seen it. Um, anyway, the other one, the younger brother, is sitting in a jail. And it looks like you're like Iron Man Marvel movies. It, he, they live in these glass boxes. And they live in these glass boxes, and they are constantly being seen. There's no privacy. They have people watching them all the time. It literally looks like a Marvel movie. And they never see the sun. They never have fresh air, nothing. They're literally in a mountain. And this is where like the major drug cartels go, because it's a huge problem, okay? <coughs> Raise your hand if you've ever been to Mexico. Raise your other hand if you've ever paid a bribe in Mexico. What? <laughs> yeah, no one's ever been asked by a Mexican police officer to pay him. It's happened to me a couple times, and I don't really do anything wild when I go to Mexico, okay? 
If you've been to Mexico, you probably just stayed at your resort. Can we agree? Mm -hmm. You don't really go driving around. You don't really go walking around too much. You typically just stay in the touristy places and you leave midday and you come back before the night. Um, why? Cartel. Cartel. Your parents probably haven't taken you to Mexico in the last couple of years because the cartel is getting um, very, very unstable because the Mexican government is finally really cracking down on them. So they've started killing Americans. And, try and kidnapping them and holding them hostage. We hear about it quite regularly uh, because it's like a new thing that they're doing because they're getting punished so heavily by the Mexican government. What do you got? So a Mexican police Yes. We were at the airport and we needed, we asked them a simple question and he said that, you know, if you don't give me uh, 50 bucks, then, you know, things like are going to happen. Bucks or like 50 Americans. You need to process internally. Sorry. You have not stopped talking anything. this whole time. Um, yeah. Yes. If you need to go somewhere and, like, it's a thing. It's like a thing. Ask your friends. I'm not that special. I'm not very unique. In my last class, we had, like, three or four people being like, yes, I had to pay a bribe to a, a Mexican police officer. Yeah, it's like a thing. And I don't go to Mexico that often. What do you got? If the cartel, like, keeps killing, like, Americans, do you think the U.S.? There's travel advisories. Like, if you go to Mexico, you literally fly into the hotel, uh, fly into the airport, and then you go straight to the hotel, and you stay there. Like, you don't, like, wander around. You may go to, like, the shopping plaza that's, like, a block or two away, or you may take an Uber or something, but you don't, like, wander around. It's not, like, a thing, and you definitely don't leave the area in which you're in. Like, if you're going to Cozumel, which is, like, a huge touristy place, then you stay in Cozumel. You don't cross the river and go into, you know, the actual parts of Mexico. It's not like you, you don't do that because the cartel is so powerful and um, the tension amongst the cartel is such like a big deal. Okay, on your whiteboard, please tell me. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the name of the legislature inside of Mexico? What is the name of the legislature inside of Mexico? When we talk about the bicameral body, they call it what, Dula? Congress. Congress. Oh, my God. It's called Congress? Who did they, on your whiteboard, who did they model their entire government on? Yes, Rinkus. The, the United States. The United States. They modeled everything. There's only one big difference in titles. What is the unique title that Mexico has given themselves? that is different from um, us, their American counterpart. Eve, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. It sounds like kind of like superheroes. It's the Chamber of Deputies. It's way cooler than the House of Representatives. Anyway, all right, on your whiteboard, please tell me how many people are inside the Chamber of Deputies? Good, Bronson, 500. Is that more or less than we have? More, because we have like 436, right? Some weird number. 436 here, they have 500 on your whiteboard, okay? Please tell me what legislature has a term limit of two terms? What legislature has a term limit of two terms? What do we got? Uh, Patrick? Senate. Senate has a two term limit. Thumbs up, thumbs down. United States have Senate term limits? No, we have a guy in con in, as, as a senator. He's from, like, Alabama or something. He's turning 93 this year. 93. That means he's 92. And he's turning 93. Like, that's wild. And he's been in Congress for 40 years. Isn't that wild? That's wild. What do you got? What is he functionally like doing? What are any of them doing? Can we agree? This uh, this House, uh, this Congress has passed less bills than any Congress in history. Because it's so divided. So I mean, there's a lot of issues going on here. All right, last board question. Here we go. On your board, what party am I describing? It is the newest party in Mexico. It started as part of PRD, but broke off in 2012. They are left wing. They focus on privatization, Pemex. Uh, Ellie, what do you got? 
There we go. All right. On your notebook, here we go. In your notebook, you're gonna write Mexico, very big on top, ladies and gentlemen. You're also gonna write week 20 to keep yourself organized. Mexico, week 20 is what you're writing on your headline page. Okay, put a big star. The hardest part for Mexico. Political parties. Everything else kind of makes logical sense, and everything else is pretty similar to the United States. So that kind of comparison is pretty easy, uh, especially like your governance structures and all that stuff. But the political parties are very tricky. So we're going to start. Okay, write down PRI. Okay, PRI is going to start in 1929. It rules from 1929 to not, uh, 2000. What do they call themselves? What's their cute little quote? What's their cute little quote? What is it? It's the perfect dictatorship. Write it down. Put down perfect dictatorship in a quote. That's what they say about themselves. The perfect dictatorship. Okay? You need to know that elections were held with no opposition. Uh, quick question. If Biden was running for 2024 and there was no candidate for the Republicans, who would win? Biden. Would it really be an election? No, because no, there's only one choice, right? That's exactly what they were doing for a very long time. Okay, You need to know that they, and right, they created the cartels. They created the cartels due to the corruption systems they created. So what is the number one problem in Mexico? Cartels are the number one problem in Mexico. Okay, People are dying. Uh, they're starving people out. They're doing terrible things. Obviously, the drug addiction and the gang life is obviously not what you want for your children either. Um, and it was all curated by PRI. Okay, so this whole system is created by them. Okay, you need to know that it is the National Action Party, or PAN. Someone asked me last class, and no one has asked me, why doesn't the PRIs and the PANs and the PRDs match up? Because it's in Spanish, and they put things in different orders. So it doesn't line up to how we say it in English because it's in Spanish in the different ordering of words. Don't ask me what it's called, but I know it's in different orders. Um, that's why. So it doesn't match up perfectly to what you expect because it's in a different order in Spanish. It's usually backwards for us. So if you think about it that way, it's a little easier to remember. Okay, the National Party Action Party, or PAN, is going to be the one who beats PRI in 2000. They beat PRI in 2000. They are anti-corruption, pro-business, and pro-Catholic. Why is Mexico pro-Catholic? Who can raise your hand? Oh my god, Brunson, did you have an amazing AP World teacher? Ugh. And what did that amazing teacher tell you? There you go. They're a colony of the Spanish. The Spanish are going to start conquering after the Protestant Reformation in order to boost up the Catholic numbers. They're going to force Catholicism on everyone. Mexico happens to be controlled by the Spanish for a very long time, hence why most of the people in Mexico are Catholic. All right. You need to know that PRD, PRD, have never been in power. Write it down. But they were the longest opposers of PRI. <clears throat> longest opposers. So when PRI was ruling, who was the biggest pain in their butts? 
PRD. They were the biggest pains in the butts, but PRD has never been in power because, frankly, they're not that popular. The reason why, put a big star. The only thing PRD is really known for that you really need to know is that they contest, contest, contest elections. What does it mean to contest an election, Mia? Yeah. Sort of. When you contest an election, you raise your hand and say, that's a fake election. Democracy did not happen. You are lying. <laughs> How does that go? Does it make democracy stronger or weaker? Weaker. Weaker. Think about here in the United States. Whether you support Donald Trump or not, that is your choice. Okay. Donald Trump, in 2020, raised his hand and said, that election is a fake. I should have won. Okay, if you believe Donald Trump, believe Donald Trump. If you believe Joe Biden, that he won the election with over 2 million more votes, okay, no matter what, Donald Trump raising his hand and saying that election is a false election, good for democracy or bad for democracy? Bad. It's bad. Everyone in the room should agree that it's bad for democracy. Because if you are a Trump supporter, it's bad for democracy because your election, your candidate got elected and then they didn't get to take power. That's a bad thing. Can we agree? But on the other side of it, if Joe Biden really won the election, which is what the courts have said, they've gone through all the litigation, every court has confirmed that Joe Biden won the election, there are people in the country who really do believe that the st election was stolen. Good for democracy or bad for democracy? Bad for democracy. There are literal people in the world who think that government elites are running the United States government. Good thing, bad thing. Bad thing, put a big star. It destabilizes democracy. Now, if an election is really stolen, should we all raise our hand and say, that's not true? Yes. But to constantly challenge elections when there is no proof of it, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing, because it weakens democracy. If you're a huge Trump supporter, this weakens democracy. If you're a huge Biden supporter, it also weakens democracy. Across the board, it weakens democracy because no actual proof was actually found of any of this. And that is a problem because today in 2023, 2024, people really do believe that the government is stolen. And people aren't going to vote and participate and do the thing because they think it's a shame. You know someone. You've all got a crazy uncle or a crazy aunt somewhere, yes? Who has got their little tinfoil hats on, yes? Mm -hmm. Thinking about 2024 and the election and all that stuff. No matter what team they're on, whether they're on pro-Biden, they think Trump's going to end the, the union, or if you're pro-Trump. You, we've all got the crazy uncles and aunts. Can we agree? And it's because of the destabilizing <coughs> of democracy. So PRD is going to destabilize the democracy inside of Mexico. All right, then you have... Morena. Morena is actually the current ruling party in Mexico, in case you care. You don't really need to know that. M-O-R-E-N-A, Morena. What you need to know about them, they are the newest party. Okay. They were a part of PRD. Okay. They are left wing, and they focus on privatization of Pemex, P-E-M-E-X, privatization of Pemex. First of all, Ash, what is Pemex? Like, like like it, it is a go it's a government agency, but what do they sell? It's one of the most val it's the most valuable resource on the planet. Ash, oil? it's oil. Okay, Pemex, if you don't know, it's gas, gas and oil, okay? And the Mexican government owns it, write it down. The Mexican government owns Pemex. You should know Pemex because I don't know if you've looked in downtown, there's a massive oil barrel, like it's huge. It's right in the port and channel side, like it's huge. It has Pemex on the side. You haven't noticed it. That's where all the gas trucks pull up and anyway, moving on. You should be more observant, people. 
Anyway, so Pemex is owned. What does it mean that they want privatization of Pemex? What does it mean, Eve? They don't want the government. They don't want the government to own it. They want a private company to own it. Why do they want a private company to own it? What happens if a government agency owns something like oil? What does it mean, Haley? They control it, but what's a big problem in Mexico? Well, the cartel is a problem, but what cartel is there because of what, Mia? The corruption. Okay, put a big star. Okay, they want privatization because the government's corrupt. Which means, are the people reaping the benefits? No. Who is reaping the benefits of Pemex? The cartel. Absolutely. The cartel has our hands all over it, okay? Because of all the corruption that the PRI have allowed to occur. So a lot of the money, is it going to enrich the lives of the people? Okay. Perfect example. Saudi Arabia. Okay. Saudi Arabia has a lot of problems. Can we agree? Okay. They are very corrupt in a lot of different ways, and they don't follow the Western path, which makes sense because um, it's in the Middle East. But all of the wealth of the money of Saudi Arabia from its oil does go to who? The people. The people of Saudi Arabia. If you were born in Saudi Arabia and you are a Saudi, you get a check every single month for hundreds of thousands of dollars. That is your share of government money. Because, and that's why everyone in Saudi Arabia drives like Bugattis and shit. Like even the police own, drive Bugattis because it's the only way they can catch a Bugatti. Like. <laughs> That, it, like, they literally take a lot of the money and then send it out to all of their citizens, which is why if you're an actual Saudi in Saudi Arabia, you are raining in cash because you are, the money that the government owns in oil is actually being cut out to the people. Now, the crown prince is doing just fine. Don't you worry about him. But the citizens are doing okay. Is that what's happening in Mexico? No. Why? Corruption. And corruption is being spearheaded by the cartel, okay? Cartel is the answer to pretty much everything in Mexico. Here we go. Okay, you need to know they are also pro-protection uh, of civil liberties, pro-indigenous groups, and reduction of corruption. Okay, they are the current ruling party of Mexico today, Moreno. Okay, so those are your four major parties. PRI is the historical one. They're the big jerks who created the cartel and the system of corruption. Then you had uh, Pan, who was going to dethrone them in 2000 and take over power. Today's modern power is going to be Morena. Morena is the current per people in charge trying to do indigenous rights. And then uh, PR PRD has just kind of been pissing off PRI for a very long time. They haven't achieved much, but they've been pissing them off. What do you got? Uh, reduction of corruption. Okay, here we go. Right, government structure. That's your next subheading. What do you got? Is PRI Sorry, still like the active party that you were yes, before? it's like the conservative. And next to PRI, I want you to write conservative. PRI is the, the right. People still vote for it, absolutely. Okay, there are people who really do believe that you know, things were easier and better underneath them. There was a lot less protesting, right? There was a lot less challenges to government authority, right? I mean, a dictatorship is kind of nice. The predictability is there. Can we agree? We have no idea who is going to be president in 2024. Like, who is going to win in November? Do you have any idea? I have no idea. No matter who you are, you have thoughts on the, the candidates, yes? Some people really do believe that Joe Biden will be the death of this country because, you know, one thing or another. Then the other half of the room thinks that Donald Trump is the death of our democracy and it'll lead to one thing or another. So no matter what, we have no idea. So a, demo a dictatorship, a perfect dictatorship where they have some elections but not uh, government leaders, some people do prefer. All right, here we go. So you need to know Mexico used to be, write it down, an authoritarian state. Mexico used to be an authoritarian state. You don't know how to spell authoritarian, it's right there. Okay, what is an authoritarian state, Tori? Kind of, you're right there. One ruler who what? Yeah, controls everything. Under 
what party was an authoritarian state, Rinkus? DRI. DRI. You should probably acknowledge that. Okay? They're an authoritarian state. Post 2000, write it down. Post 2000, Mexico is trying to be a democratic regime. They're trying. I would underline the word trying. How's it going for them? Yeah. Yeah. It's better than it was, but there's still some, you know, the cartel is still wreaking some huge havoc. Um, I think death. Uh, murder rates are higher now than they would have been in like the 70s. So things aren't great. Uh, the peso, which is the currency of Mexico, is also at like its lowest it's been in like 70 years. So lots of things have to do. Okay. You need to know it is a federal system of government. Why do we know it's a federal system of government, Ash? Yes, these are all the states Mexico has. Hey, look at them all. Okay, we don't need to write this down, but social cleavages, you know, things that divide people. To the north, you're gonna have more industrial. There's more money to the north. Why is there more money in the north? Fallen. Yeah, but what is that? Factories. Yeah, it's factories that are trading with the United States and Mexico. The southern part of Mexico is very poor. Why? What are they doing down there, Mia? Yeah, they're farming. So agriculture down here, factories up there. Industrialized versus 